Amen. So good morning again. And today's lesson is done with the flesh and on with Jesus. We taught for, uh, because February was the month, uh, the heart month, the month of uh, people getting in their feelings about love. And so we started out teaching about the flesh, fool by feeling. And so we talked that whole month of February about the, the flesh. And so that's done. I'm done with the flesh. I want to get on with Jesus. Amen. Uh, I can only teach so much about the flesh because then it starts becoming grievous to me. Because <laughs> God said, uh, hate the garment. Hate the garment that's even spotted with the flesh. Got a spot of flesh. Just a, imagine a, a pure, pure white outfit and there's a little stain on it. <laughs> Amen. That's how it is. You're the righteous. You're born again. And that, that, that flesh just messes everything up. I remember in Quincy, we had beautiful snow. Every year it snowed from like, seemed like it was, I know it was November to about February, but maybe earlier, but beautiful white snow. And you go out and it's so pure and beautiful. And then there's a pile of dog stuff. Oh, that's how, it, that's how the flesh is, y'all. <laughs> it's just ugly and grievous. So I'm glad we're done with it. So I don't want to talk about it no more. Jesus, my name. Now, what I did, those teachings about the flesh are on video. They're on video for your resource materials, because periodically we have to examine ourselves for sin. Amen. We have to examine ourselves for sin. And I ain't saying I'm finna go to heaven, but when I do pass on to heaven, those videos is going to be left in a foundation. Uh, so Because the pure word of God is timely. I mean, a hundred years from the day, the, the word of God is good. I read about people that preached 600 years ago. It's still the word of God don't change. I don't care what uh, year you in, it's timely. And so those videos will be in a foundation. You need to start getting them now so you can get your life together and not just for you, but for other people. And men's schemes, tactics, and other teachings, they got all kinds of stuff going on today that are not timely and they can't help them, but, but God's words will not pass away. So all those teachings on the flesh are there for you to utilize anytime you want. But for now, I got to get back to Jesus, hallelujah. <laughs> and uh, I know when the Holy Spirit is teaching, he always lifts up Jesus. And uh, periodically we gotta teach you about this, that, and the other. But uh, even when we teach you about other things, uh, we always will lift up Jesus. Everything taught is taught with, in reference to Jesus Christ. Amen. So today, um, the Holy Spirit is going to teach us about three things that Jesus overcame. The devil, he overcame the devil. The flesh, he overcame the flesh. And the world, he overcame the devil, the flesh, and the world. And if we're going to walk with God, and be a help to other people, we have to overcome the same three things. Amen. So I'm going to show you two burdens and two yokes. Go with me with our first scripture to Isaiah 10. Two yokes and two burdens and two yokes. And uh, you either going to have one or the other. Amen. And when you become a Christian, it's your choice which one you get. Now, when you're in the world, you ain't got no choice. You got the devil's burdens and yokes. But when you become a Christian, I'm talking about a real live one, born again, converted Christian, uh, you got a choice. You can still hang on to the devil's burdens and yokes if you want to, or you can get Jesus's. Hallelujah. So Isaiah 10, verse 27, it says, and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden, means the devil's burden, shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and uh, the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The devil's yoke shall be destroyed, not broke, destroyed, utterly destroyed uh, because of the anointing. Amen. And so here we're looking at some language uh, 
burden and yoke. So you may ask, what is a burden and what is a yoke? So I'm going to give you some definitions because uh, if you got a burden and it's, uh, then you need to know what that is. If you got a yoke, well, actually the burden he says is on your shoulder and the yoke is on your neck. You need to know what that is. So when it's taken away, you need to know what that is. <laughs> Amen. So a burden is a task or load uh, to impose something on, period. To encumber, period. A responsibility, I'll go back over these, period. A cause of worry. So we know what burdens are. A task or a load. You got a burden, you got a, a load, you got a heavy load. The devil puts heavy loads on people. Heavy loads. They, and, and to impose something on. Human beings put imposed burdens on people, one another. The devil imposed things on human beings. We all come out of having the devil's burdens. We come out of that, hopefully. And encumber, that means to weigh you down. Burdens weigh you down. Uh, responsibility. We have responsibilities out there. Uh, some of us got burdens on us that we put on ourselves and, and they cause cause of worry. So that's what a burden is. A task or a load to impose something on, to encumber a responsibility or it could be a cause of worry. Now understand both Jesus and the devil got burdens and yokes. So Jesus is going to put something on you too, but he is different than the devils. Okay. Then a yoke. A yoke is something given to a means to carry the burden. That's why it says yoke off thy neck. So that's to link or to join to. So if you linked or joined to the devil's yoke, then you, you got demons helping you carry the devil's burdens. I mean, it's a shame before God, the mess Adam and Eve got us human beings in and that we keep perpetuating with our messes. <laughs> Amen. Because of a lack of knowledge. Amen. And so uh, to link or to join. So all of us was joined to the devil before we got born again by nature, by the sin nature. And he still want to link and join up with you to cause some mess. Now, a good def uh, way to ex uh, uh, understand what a yoke is, we all know uh, oxen. All of us should know what oxen is. They have a yoke on their neck. They joined at the neck by a bar or frame of wood to bear a heavy burden together. So one oxen can't bear it. So they yoke them together, two oxen, so they can bear a heavy burden. And so that's what a yoke is. So now you know what a burden is. A, bear, a burden is a heavy load and a yoke is different. A yoke is to link or join. And so let's read that. Uh, Isaiah 10 and 27 one more time having that knowledge and understanding and it shall come to pass in that day that day happened at the cross that his burden means the devil's burden his heavy loads whatever you put on you shall be taken away from off thy shoulder you ain't got to bear nothing the devil got had for you and his yoke where he didn't join himself with you all his demons shall be taken off thy neck and the yoke, that link between you and the devil, shall be destroyed, utterly destroyed. Because of why? Because of the anointing. Nothing else can destroy that but the anointing. Amen. Now, the anointing that he's talking about here is the anointed one. Look over right, you're right next to Isaiah 11. The anointed one, Isaiah 11, 1 through 5. This is the day that he's talking about. Of course, this is predicted or, or, or prophesied about, but it's already happened 2,000 years ago for us. See, we're on the other side of this. Isaiah 11, verse 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. That's the anointing, the anointed one. The spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes. Thank God. 
neither reprove after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth, thank God, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins and Lord have mercy, faithfulness, the girdle of his reins. That is the anointed one, Jesus Christ. His name is Jesus, his title is Christ. Christ means the anointed one. He says there's gonna be many coming in these lands, they talking about they, they the anointed, they the anointed. We talking about the anointed one. That's how the yoke is dis, utterly destroyed. Uh, that day, over there in 1027, it shall come to pass in that day. And that happened on the cross. So that day already happened. Amen. And uh, so uh, now we want to look at um, uh, what that uh, uh, anointed one says. He invites us. Everything starts with Jesus. Remember I said, I'm done with the flesh, now on with Jesus. Everything starts with Jesus. Nothing can happen in Isaiah 10, 27 without Jesus, the anointed one. Amen. Christo, the anointed one, Jesus, the Christ. In fact, that's more appropriate than Jesus Christ. Jesus, the Christ. Jesus, the anointed one. The one that has the anointing that can destroy the yoke. I ain't trying to push no yoke aside. It needs to be destroyed. You don't even need to be broke. Destroy it <laughs> through the anointing. Amen. Because if you can break it, you can glue it back again. But if it's destroyed, it's utterly destroyed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so let's go to Matthew 11. See, everything starts with Jesus. Everything starts with Jesus. And let's look at the other burden and yoke. See, Jesus got a burden and a yoke too. Just like the devil has, he has a burden and a yoke. So, and that's found in Matthew 11. Thank you, Lord. Matthew 11, and we've seen this scripture a thousand, well, not a thousand, but many times. And today we get a little better understanding because when we get knowledge and understanding, we can get wisdom when we apply it. It's good to get an understanding, hallelujah. Just having some words and don't know what they mean uh, we need understanding. God said, with all you're getting, get understanding. Amen. Now, while you're there in Matthew 11 and 28, I want you to go, I'm going to send you this uh, lesson anyway, but uh, back there in Isaiah 11, I, I missed one little scripture that I have to give to you, but it takes you over to Matthew 11 and it's verse 16. So right now, Matthew 11 and 16, I'll just go ahead and read it to you. It says, and there shall be a highway for the remnant of his people. Uh, which shall be left from Assyria, like as it was in Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. But the main thing is there shall be a highway for the remnant of the people. Uh, and that a highway is a road to follow. And that road starts with Jesus in Matthew 11. It starts with Jesus. So when we go out to minister to people, if we're not leading them to Jesus, we ain't doing nothing. We, 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 we can't help them. We can't help them in our own strength. We have to lead them to Jesus. Amen. And so in Matthew 11 and 28, we're going to see the other burden and yoke. We already, saw, we already saw the devil's burden and yoke, which was going to be destroyed by the anointed one. So Matthew 11, 28, Jesus is making an invitation. And he says, come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Where did we just see heavy laden at? That laden, that, that heavy burden that the devil put on people, everybody. He said, take my yoke, which means he got a yoke, upon you. So he said, link up with me. Amen. And learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto your souls, your mind, will, and emotion. Thank God. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So see, when you come to Jesus, you still gonna have a yoke and you still gonna have a, a burden. But the burden is, he says his yoke is um, 
easy. His yoke is easy. It's not the devil telling you to do something uh, and, and jerking your neck this way and jerking your neck that way. In fact, Jesus Christ took the whole, almost the whole load of, of the, uh, uh, the, the burden and the yoke. All we're doing is linking up. You done, done the whole work. On the cross, he said, it is finished. It is finished. And he said, my burden is light. So you do have a burden when you come to Christ. Amen. We just don't come to Christ and say, I love the Lord. And then we just keep on skipping the loop, just doing our thing in the flesh and playing with the devil and stuff. No, he said he destroyed that. So you, you give up the devil's burden, your thing, God. But you still got a burden and a yoke. Now let's look at those definitions again. A burden, the definition is a task. Amen. A load. Now, what does he say about his burden? He said his burden is light. Always bear in mind, Matthew 28, the burden that Jesus gives you is light. So you're going to have a task or a load. He's going to impose something on you. And I'm going to show you what it is in just a second. It's not going to be, well, it is encumbering, but he done done the work, the majority of it. A responsibility. You still got a responsibility. A cause of worry. You got no cause of worry when you, when G, when you got Jesus' burden. It's light. Amen. And uh, let me show you what he imposes up on you. Uh, and, and the yoke. Uh, 29, learn of me. That's it. He said, uh, uh, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you a take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. Learn. Of, that's the only burden you got from Jesus Christ is to learn about him. Get knowledge, get understanding, and when you apply it, it becomes wisdom. That's all. Just learn what you got. And that is not Greek. You know, it's hard to serve Christ. You got it all wrong. It's hard to serve the devil. The devil the one put the heavy load on you. Not Christ. Christ just said, come learn. It's all in the knowledge. But we make it so hard because we just stiff neck and hard heart. So he said his yoke is easy. And why does he say his yoke is easy? Because Jesus Christ has done all of the work. We just have to come and learn what that is and submit to him. So here Jesus, we're taking those two oxen again. Now, 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 just check this out. Here's this big, 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 gigantic oxen. And then one little bitty one over here. <laughs> because this big oxen is taking all the load. All we're doing is linking ourselves with him. Oh boy, if y'all get that, link yourself with Jesus. Learn of him and do what he says. That's all you have to do. He done done all the work. That is something else. So he said, come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and that's every human being in the world, and I'll give you rest. Because you're out there heavy laden with the burden, with the devil. He done put some burdens on you that's been weighing you down physically, mentally. When he says you're going to get rest for your soul, that's your mind, will, and emotion. Your mind's messed up. You will, you don't know what to do. Emotionally all messed up. He'll give your soul rest. Amen. And then he says, take my yoke, take my yoke. Or in other words, link with me, join with me. Come with me, come unto me and join with me. Don't just come unto me so I can give you stuff. <laughs> he got so much more than physical stuff, so much more. And uh, take my yoke upon me, link with me and learn of me. See, Jesus is the teacher. See, I sit at his feet in the morning. I still sit at the feet of Jesus. I love it. I'm just so spoiled. I'm just like Mary. Can't nobody take it from me. He told me I chose the best part. Amen. I still sit at the red letter. Them red letters coming straight out the mouth of Jesus. I love this whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation. But I love, love, love Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I still sit at the feet of Jesus. Come and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest to your soul. For my yoke, when you look up with me, it's going to be easy. And my burden, the task that I give you is light. So let's look at the task. Let's go to 1 John, way to the back. 1 John 5. Let's look at the task that Jesus gives us. That uh, yoke is easy and burden is light. Amen. Talking about it's hard to serve the Lord. No, it ain't. It's hard to serve the devil. We see people out there trying, Christians trying to serve the Lord, but they serve the devil. That's a hard load to bear. 
<laughs> that flesh and the devil. Ooh, that's a hard life. <laughs> My goodness. See, see, like when you come to Jesus, well, I guess a lot of folks ain't come to Jesus yet. Maybe don't understand what that means. But praise God, I hope we get a, 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 a knowledge and understanding today so you can apply this and get some wisdom going on. First John 5, First John 5. Thank you, Lord. And then one through five, one through five. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ or the anointed one is born of God. And everyone that loves him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. So if we love him, he's begotten of God, so we love him. We love God, we love Jesus. We ought to love everybody that's begotten of him. We ought to love all Christians. Anybody that's born of Jesus ought to love every other Christian, even love our enemy. But right now, this is what he's talking about. Verse two, by this, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and what? Keep his commandments. There's your burden right there. Keep his commandments. Uh, for, the, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. They're not heavy. They ain't no, God ain't put no heavy burden on, on us like the devil put on us. That the devil put heavy burdens. Out there confessing that we're Christians and still sinning and in the flesh and, and, and your heart, is, your life is hard to my case, sir, I don't know how to, yeah, you do. Come on to Jesus and learn of him and keep his commandments. That's his burden. And it's light. It's easy. Amen. I'm a witness. It was so much harder. It's harder to serve the devil and it's so hard trying to serve too. It's just like a husband or a wife trying to uh, uh, commit adultery. It's hard. You, it's hard to, to try to uh, have two men or two women or whatever. It's hard. That's a hard life. You chose a hard life for yourself. So come unto Jesus and do what he said. And according to, and it's true, because I'm a witness, verse three, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. Amen, they're not. For whatsoever is born of God, here come that third overcoming, overcometh what? The world. That's the last one. Overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcomes the world? But he that believes that Jesus is the son of God. So you overcome the devil. We didn't talk about the devil. We ain't gonna do that but one time a year because I can't stand teaching about him either. <laughs> we didn't talk about the flesh for a whole month and I just got to have to get done with the flesh. Let me get on to Jesus. And now we're gonna talk about the world. Overcometh the world. People are in, I'm talking about Christian now enamored with the world. They love it. Christian, they just sneak little world stuff into Christianity and stuff. But Jesus overcame the world. So I'm going to show you some stuff here that Jesus says to do, and it's not grievous. It's not. It's easy and light. And if, like I said up here, let's see, where is that? Uh, um, if we're going to walk with God and be a help to others, we got to overcome the same three things Jesus overcame. The devil, the flesh, and the world. All three of them must be overcome. Amen. If we're going to walk with God. And, it's, and, we gonna, uh, and, and, we, and that anointing, that anointing that destroys the yoke, if that's going to be in operation, we got to link up with Jesus and do what he says. Amen. We got to take his burden is easy and light. And it is. It's so easy when, when you do what Jesus says because he's done the majority 99.9999% of the work. And we just link it up with that little one little, <laughs> y'all got to get this in Jesus' name to make your life easy in life. And, and you'll find rest to your soul. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now let's go to Romans 12, one and two. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, I'm gonna try to get through this because I, I wanna 
I want to at least touch, let's see, I got one, two, three, three scriptures. I want to at least touch all three of these scriptures. And then we'll go over more next Sunday because we got to get to communion. We'll go to Romans 12. Every Christian got to do this. Everyone don't. But if you is going to walk with God, you're going to do this. Romans 12, because this is part of the burden, which is easy in life. It's reasonable. See, the devil put unreasonable stuff on you and grievous stuff. The things Jesus asked you to do are not grievous and they are unreasonable. So Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beg you. That's why Paul said beseech. I beg you. All of us that's in a position of authority that had to do this and found out where it's at. Beg you. Therefore, brethren, he ain't talking to the world, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy, which is set aside for God, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Reasonable. Reasonable. This ain't no heavy burden. You just make up your mind. You're going to come to Jesus or you're not. How long you'll be hot? Going to be hot between two opinions. You're going to believe God or the devil or your flesh or the world. <laughs> Amen. Got to make a choice if you're going to walk with God. And if you want that yoke destroying anointing to operate when you go to help somebody, instead of making things worse, the yoke destroys, the, the anointing destroys the yoke, utterly destroys it. But you got to link with Jesus and you got to obey his commandments. And this is one right here. Look at the verse two. He's not asking you to be conformed. He's commanding. Anytime it says be, be ye, that's a commandment. And be not conformed to this world. Let me stop right there. Be, he's commanding us. Be not conformed to this world. You have over, He said, I've overcome the world and you overcome the world. Be not, stop trying to be like the world. Stop, stop being enamored with the world. Stop loving the world. Stop trying to get the world into Christian things. Stop it. Amen. Jesus is enough. He's more than enough. He is the anointed one which destroys the yoke of the devil utterly. But it ain't destroyed because we out there doing all, all kind of mess. But anyway, so this is a commandment. If, now look here, you don't have to do this. But if you're going to walk with God and be a help to other people, this is what you got to do. And of course, we want to help people. We want to be effective. Who got time wasting time? Helping people, they just get worse and worse and worse. Amen. So verse two, let's look at it again. And be not conformed or trying to fit in or use it, adapting the things of this world, but be changed, be transferred, changed by the renewing of your mind. That's why Jesus said, come to me and learn of me. And then you'll be able to prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Then you'll know what's that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now let's go back to Isaiah 12. We're going to give some God, God some praise here in Isaiah 12, and then we're going to Isaiah 30. And then, because um, we're getting close to our communion, Isaiah 12. I'm so glad to get back to Jesus and out that flesh. I don't know what to do. Now I'm dealing with the world, but uh, the world ain't, 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 ain't quite as bad as the flesh. <laughs> I'm just I've overcome all three of them rascals. <laughs> But that flesh is one of the worst ones. But but the world is something you just have to uh, recognize. And you know how they say in the world, just recognize. <laughs> Amen. So let's go to uh, Isaiah 12, 1 through 6. And in that day, that day when you obey God, uh, thou shalt say, O oh Lord, I will praise thee. Thou, though thou was angry with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou confidest me. It'll be so much better when you do this. Behold, God, this is what you're going to be saying. God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. I tell you, trusting in the world. Let that stuff go. Therefore, with joy, with joy, shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. Woo, y'all just, I'm telling you, I'm trying to be a witness and telling you here. And in that day shall ye say, praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his doings among the people, make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for he has done excellent 
things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. I mean, when you come unto Jesus, and when you, when you go to help somebody, you lead them to Jesus instead of your opinions and your whatever of the world, this is what you see. I mean, because you see how excellent he works how the anointing destroys, utterly destroys the yoke. Now let's go look at the world real good in Isaiah 30. Real good at how it can help you and what God says about the world. Are you supposed to overcome the devil, the flesh, and the world? See, I'm not enamored with the world. I can't hardly stand the world. Now, understand there's things in the world that there are many things in the world that uh, are of God, such as physicians. We got some Christians so holy, uh, they want to call the whole medical and scientific thing sorcery and witchcraft and all. No, it's not. I worked in that. God led me to that work, and he ain't going to lead me to that. But what we mainly talk about in the world is when they start messing with your mind and your emotions. When they start messing with your soul, they're off limits. Your soul belongs to be dealt with only with God. Now, what is your soul? Your mind, your will, and your emotions. When you start going to the world's way of things to deal with your mind problems, your emotion problems and stuff, you're missing it. That's, you're supposed to go to God for that. Amen. You can go to the, to the podiatrist for a toe. <laughs> for them toenails or you go to eye doctor and get some glasses like I had to do but when it comes to my mind my, my, my soul, my mind, my will and my emotions I'm going to God's word every time to his Holy Spirit I'm going to the anointed one amen amen and that's what it is so let's look at, get a good look at this uh, uh, world here and uh, we should be uh, done. So I'm going, uh, I'm going to read Isaiah 31 through 26. And uh, it says, woe, the first word is woe. That means you just bring a curse down on your own self. To the rebellious children, says the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me. And that cover with a covering, but not of me, of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. Now, let's look at that right there. This is those Christians that rely on, depend on, trust in the world for their soulless things more than they do for God. Now, if you, if you, you can actually go to a psychologist, but it better be a Christian psychologist. Now, psychiatrists, I don't, I don't, even, I don't think they're even compatible with Christianity. But psychologists is just a study of the, the human soul. But there's Christian, there's actually Christian psychologists, but not psychiatrists. But we, some people are just enamored, enamored with the world because some people have degrees or whatever, and a bit more know nothing about the Lord than a, a man in the moon. A lot of people uh, commit suicide uh, when all they had to do was say, I forgive, or, or, or I forgive this one, if, if somebody could get them to forgiveness. And, and uh, but but the world don't know nothing about that, you know, and so uh, a, a lot of stuff could be prevented by going to God, for go to God for your soul, Amen. Go to the cardiologist for your physical heart and, and your lungs, and go to the GI doctor for your stomach. Go to the dermatologist for your skin, but go to God for your soul, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Go down there to the, to the to Kaiser and get your COVID shot. I got mine. <laughs> but it comes to my soul, I'm going to God. I'm doing what Jesus said. Come and learn of me. And let my anointing destroy it. Hallelujah. So let's let's go. On. I want to get this. I want to get done by 10, 10. Okay. All right. I better get busy. So woe to the rebellious children. He called people rebellious that do that. Says the Lord that take counsel, but not of me. That cover with a covering. I'm trying to get somebody to cover your sin. Because a lot of time it's sin. But not of my spirit. 
that they may do what? Add sin to sin. See, Jesus overcome this stuff. Add sin to sin. That walk to go down into Egypt, Egypt as the world, and have not asked at my mouth, haven't sought Christian counsel, haven't looked in the word, to do what? To strengthen himself in the strength of Pharaoh, that's the world, and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. <laughs> Look at that. Now, what does God say going to happen? Verse three. Therefore, shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame, and the trust in the shadow of Eve, your confusion. All you're going to get is confusion and shame out that mess. For his princes were at Zoan and his ambassadors came to Haines. They were all ashamed of a people that could not profit them, nor be a help nor profit, but a shame and a reproach. And going to spend money giving to them too. Look at verse 6. The burden of the beasts of the south into the land of trouble and anguish from which come the young and old lion, the viper. We're going to go over it more next Sunday. We got more time. And fiery flying serpent. They will carry their riches up on the shoulders of young asses and their treasures up on the bunches of camel to a people that shall not profit them. Spending a lot of time and money in the world and still can't profit you. Verse 7. For the Egyptian or the world shall help in vain and to no purpose. Therefore, I cried concerning this. Their strength is to sit still. Sit still. Leave them alone and go to God. Verse 8. Now go, write it before them in a table and note it in a book that it may be for, some, for the time to come forever and ever that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not. They don't want to hear what the word says. And to the prophecy, the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceit. Get ye out of the way, turn aside out of the past, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. They don't want to hear God's word. These want to hear what the world this is. This is where a lot of victim mentality comes from. We ain't got no victim mentality as Christians. We're overcomers. We overcome the world. Verse 11. Get you out of the way, turn aside out of the past, cause uh, and, it, and they say, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Wherefore, thus says the Holy One of Israel, because you despise this word and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay thereon, therefore this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking comes suddenly at an instant. You ain't going to get no better. You're going to get worse. And he shall break it as the breaking of the potter's vessel that is broken in pieces. He shall not spare so that there shall not be found in the bursting of it a sure to take fire from the hearth or to take water withal out of the pit. For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall you be saved. Come out from the world. In returning and rest shall be saved. In quietness and in confidence in your God shall be your strength. But you wouldn't. You don't want that. Look what verse 6 says. But you said no. For we will flee upon horses. Therefore shall ye flee, God said. And we will ride upon the swift. Therefore shall they that pursue you be swift. You, If, if you insist on, on, on trusting in that world, you... you this is what's going to happen to you. 17. 1,000 shall flee at the rebuke of one. At the rebuke of five shall ye flee till ye be left as a beacon upon the top of the mountain as an ensign on a hill. And therefore, now look at this. Look at this. God is so faithful. We just saw in Isaiah uh, 11 where he is faithful. Even though we are out there ignorant, God is faithful. And look what he does. 18. And therefore will the Lord wait. He'll wait on us that he may be gracious unto you. And therefore will he 
be exalted, that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment. That's over there in Isaiah 11, that anointed one. Blessed are they that wait for him. Ooh, blessed are those that wait for him. I'm telling y'all, it's a wonderful thing to wait on the Lord. 19, for the people shall dwell at Zion, at Jerusalem, in Zion at Jerusalem. Thou shall weep no more. He shall be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. When he shall hear it, he will answer it. You got to read what Jesus said, come unto me, come unto me, come unto me, come unto me. And look at this while you're out there. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, check this out. Yet shall not thy teachers be removed unto a corner anymore, but thine eyes shall see thy teacher. Amen. So God will always have you a teacher to teach you, to show you the way. Verse 12, 21, and thine ear shall hear a word behind thee saying, this is the way, walk in it, walk in it. When you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. So God, that, that's what all these teachings is about. God puts these uh, uh, in teachers, warn you. He said he's not going to take your teachers away from you. God is good. He's faithful. He going to always have some people to tell you the truth. Even though you walk in adverse to him, he's a good God. He's a merciful God. He's a loving God. Verse 22, you, you shall uh, defile also the covering of thy graving images of silver and the ornaments of thy molten images of gold. Thou shalt cast them away as a mistress cloth. Thou shalt say unto it, get thee hence. When you finally come to your senses and obey God, you will be like the, the flesh and the world, Get away from me. See, that's how it, it, the, the world in the flesh should be distasteful. The devil, the world in the flesh, in your mind, should just be distasteful. Amen. That's how you're cast it away. And uh, 23, then shall he give the rain of thy seed, that thou shalt sow the ground with all the bread of the increase of the earth, and it shall be fat and plenteous in that day shall thy cattle feed in large pastures. The oxen likewise and the young asses that ear the ground shall eat clean provender, which has been winnowed with the shovel and with the fan. And there upon every, upon every high mountain and upon every high hill, rivers and streams of waters in the day of the great slaughter when the towers fall. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days in the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people and healeth the stroke of their womb when you overcome the world. Now, we already go overcome the devil, the flesh. Now you got to overcome the world. You got to stop being enamored with the world. Stop it. So we're going to do more of this next time, but you got all the scriptures. You got them all. From Isaiah 10, 27, Isaiah 11, 1 through 5 and 16, Matthew 11, 28 through 30, 1 John 5, 1 through 5, Romans 12, 1 and 2, Isaiah 12, 1 through 6, Isaiah 30, 1 through 26. If you are going to walk with God and going to be a help to other people, you got to overcome the devil, the world, and the flesh. And you got to come unto Jesus and take his burden and his yoke upon you because they're easy and light. And he said his burden and his yoke is to learn of him, that is, get knowledge and understanding, and then apply it by obeying what he said to do. And that's all in those scriptures that I gave you. Obey him. And his commandments are not grievous. Ain't no heavy burdens there. You want people to be set free? We all love people. Everybody who's a Christian loves people. And we want to help them. But we have to do it Jesus' way. We just can't be going in and, and tell them the world's way or our opinions or whatever. And if you don't know Jesus' way, then learn. Amen. Learn of him. But, but uh, trying to uh, counsel people uh, with the world's way is not going to help them. You got to teach them to go to Jesus and do what Jesus said. That's the only thing going to help. Amen. Nothing else will help. Not the devil. Well, we know the devil ain't. The flesh ain't going to help. Them. And the world can't help them. 
that's a people that cannot prophesy. Like I said, if I got a skin problem, I can go to the dermatologist. But when it comes to my mind, my will, and my emotions, take it to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. I'm so glad to get back to talking about Jesus. <laughs> now I'm ready for communion. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Isaiah 54. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Woo, I'm ready to get back to the Lord. Isaiah 53. Thank you, G. Y'all got your communion cups and you're ready. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your word. Hallelujah. Oh, in these last days, you know something? We ain't got no time out to be uh, missing God. I'm so glad for that three to four, that one little hour, three to four on Sunday, hour prayer where people can come. Let's talk about it. Maybe let's, let's, instead of just laying hands on you and praying for you, you walk away and they got a clue. They're waiting for some miracle to happen, something that lightning to strike it, uh, to change things. Let's talk about it. <laughs> Amen. That's God's way, according to James 5, 14, 15, and 16. Thank you, Lord. So Isaiah 53. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We praise you. Wonderful Savior. We take your burden and your yoke. And we love it. We join with you. Tell us what to do and we'll do it. In Jesus' name. Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. With his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was there any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he has poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession, thank God, for the transgressors. Amen. Amen. So we want to get your cups out. I'm going to pray over them, and then uh, we'll have our song, and then we'll come back and take communion. So uh, get your cups, stretch your hand toward your cup. Lord, we thank you, and we pray to you uh, for this uh, through prayer and thanksgiving that we have sanctified this common bread and this common drink and called it from its common use to a holy use, Lord God, uh, so that uh, it can uh, be your body and your blood 
and for uh, Holy Communion. And we just thank you and pray to you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to play, play the song as you uh, contemplate on what the Lord has done for us. And then we'll go after that and take communion. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. 